Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Welcome to a brand new episode of mine today. I want to talk to you about the DJI Mavic Mini. What am I going to talk about? I'm going to answer your questions because like a week ago I published my review and even though it covered I think most of the important topics obviously there are some questions that were left unanswered because it's really hard to stack all answers into one review video because then it would just increase the time and it would in the end be I don't know one and a half hours long but I carefully read through your comments both on Facebook and of course on YouTube and I uh, think I collected the most important questions and I'm going to answer those right here and right now. Buckle up, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and of course don't forget to subscribe to never again miss any of my upcoming videos. We're going to get started right here and right now. No, unfortunately the software does not show how many satellites are connected to the drone in flight. It only shows the number of satellites and I can show you that. Take a look at this. The drone shows the number of satellites only while it is looking for them before the flight. So once you turn on the drone and place it somewhere and the drone tries to connect to a minimum of 10 satellites, then at the bottom of the site you can see how many satellites it is already connected to. But once it is connected to enough satellites, then it disappears and you cannot see how many satellites the drone is working with if it's just like the minimum of 10 or if it's already connected to 15 or 19 or whatsoever so unfortunately that information in flight is missing before the answer a quick explanation in many countries you have to register your drone if it weighs more than 250 grams and that is why this drone only weighs 249 grams ready for takeoff with the propellers and with the battery installed. Now the question is quite smart. What about the sticker? Does it affect the weight? Because of course if the sticker makes the weight of the drone exceed the 250 grams then maybe you should just fly without the sticker. Maybe that would be smarter. I checked the weight on my own kitchen scale and after that I really ran to three neighbors in total, asked them for their kitchen scale because I really wanted to make sure that I measure this correctly. And all four kitchen scales were sure that the value is the same and unfortunately the value is 251 grams once you attach the sticker. So if it is important to you to stay below the 250 grams border then better just don't install the sticker because yeah unfortunately it seems to add 2 grams of weight to the drone. So far I haven't had any trouble with the image transmission and the signal transmission in general of the Mavic Mini. It worked pretty reliable I must say. If you stay within line of sight and that can mean uh, flying out a couple of hundreds of meters still but if you don't exceed that then I think that you're pretty safe and good to go with the Mavic Mini which is quite extraordinary because if I compare the uh, image transmission signal um, of the Mavic Mini to the image transmission signal of for example the DJI Spark that's another small and affordable drone then I can only say that the Mavic Mini really does a lot better. So with the Spark I sometimes I had like a black screen while filming and that was quite annoying then I had to come closer with the drone in order to see something again with the Mavic Mini that has not happened a single time sometimes I saw like little pixels but still I saw everything so uh, it was just less sharp on my display um, but it worked out the whole time no trouble and I'm never taking it out any further because I want to stay within line of sight that's just what the law says it tells us to fly within line of sight and I think that in most cases you anyways don't need to fly out further and um, I'm pretty happy with the image transmission of the Mavic Mini and keeping in mind that I'm already flying in Europe and in Europe the the, the drone signal strength is already more limited than when for example flying in the United States. And if already here in Europe I'm quite fine with the image, image transmission then in America it can only be better and uh, I think that both Europeans and Americans can be happy about the image transmission 
At least when flying within line of sight, God in heaven did I talk long, but yeah, I wanted to thoroughly answer this question. Yeah, some people seem to have noticed that while filming my review I was wearing like a drone shirt the whole time and even now I'm wearing a drone shirt you can see it here evolution of the man so to say there are actually I think 30 that's a guess maybe 30 different drone designs and you can get those shirts on my website tomstechtime.com slash shirts and you can basically print those designs on anything not just shirts but you can print them on I don't know a hoodie or a mug whatever you guys want or of course traditionally on a shirt which I prefer so check it out tomstechtime.com slash shirts That's actually an interesting question and I must say that already within my review I criticized that there are so many openings in the drone's body I think that DJI tried to save some weight by cutting some extra openings. Um, when I was flying, really quite a lot of sand entered the drone and after the flight I really had to uh, blow the sand outside of the drone's body and I really had to carefully shake some of the sand outside so there was quite a bit of sand inside. But the drone flies perfectly fine even though I would really highly recommend in case you're not filming the drone and the drone has to look totally sexy with all the, you know, with all the sand flying around it once you start the motors. If that's not the case, then just fly from, I don't know, another surface. Just put the drone um, maybe on, on a rock or by a landing pad. I can put a link in the description below the video. Um, then you're all good to go. So I would, of course, not recommend you to fly all the time um, on, on such a, let's say, dirty, uh, ground where either dirt or sand or whatever could enter the drone's body. That's not recommended, but uh, yeah, I think that's an answer, isn't it? Yes, it seems that you are limited to a maximum distance of 40 meters when it comes to all the special automatic flight functions. Um, why they chose 40 meters as a maximum distance, I don't precisely know. Maybe it is because the drone tries to track you and once it is further away than 40 meters, it would lose you. It actually already loses you a bit before that, I can say from experience. But yeah, 40 meters seems to be the maximum distance. Unfortunately, no, the drone cannot automatically take panoramas, for example. You would have to do that manually, but it's not a big deal. If you really want to uh, take, I don't know, a nice panoramic photo, then you just uh, raise the drone, you let it hover steadily, then you take one photo, rotate the drone a tiny bit, take another photo, rotate the drone a tiny bit, take another photo, and then there are tons of free apps with which you can put together panoramas. Or of course, if you want the paid option, then go with Lightroom or Photoshop, they all can get that done. Now two answers. The first one is that you should know that once you fly higher than 120 meters, that is illegal in most countries. But now the answer to the question itself is, of course you can fly higher than 120 meters. 500 meters is the maximum altitude you can fly with the Mavic Mini, even though I would be pretty careful because you should keep in mind that the drone is quite small and up there might be stronger winds and the weather might be different. So just be a bit more careful when flying high with the drone and I would not recommend flying higher than 120 meters. And if that is what you're anyways gonna try, then you will have a little pop-up um, within the Fly app and that pop-up says you are modifying the max flight altitude setting the flight altitude over 400 feet slash 120 meters may violate local laws and regulations. By doing so, you bear full responsibility for the resulting impact of modifying the flight altitude and absolve DJI and its affiliates of any liability. Again, it's not recommended to fly higher than 120 meters, but technically you could. Quick answer, no, unfortunately you can't. Not only the Sparks remote doesn't work with the Mavic Mini, but no other remote control 
works with the Mavic Mini. You have to use the original one that comes in the box and uh, that's it. At the moment, that is what you're limited to. Another good question. I actually texted Litchi because Litchi, they manufacture apps for drones and they often add some extra functions that you don't have on the standard apps. So it of course would be quite nice to have a functional Litchi app that allows a drone to do more cool fancy stuff than the DJI Fly app because the DJI Fly app is quite limited when it comes to special features and functions. So I um, I texted Litchi and they answered and they said hi. At this time we don't know if DJI will add support for the Mavic Mini in the DJI development kit in brackets not to be confused with DJI Go slash DJI Fly. If and when DJI does add support for this new drone model then we will add support in Litchi. It is too early to tell when this will happen. It can take weeks or months. It mostly depends on DJI at this point. Take that as an answer. Nobody knows yet. TomsTechTime.com. Everything that drone pilots need in one place. Controlling the Mavic Mini only with your smartphone without a remote is unfortunately not possible. On the other hand side, why am I saying unfortunately? I know that for example, the DJI Spark and I think even the original Mavic Pro, you could control them only with your smartphone. So you uh, kind of like connected your smartphone to the drone and then you could control it without the need of a remote controller. But I never use that because usually then the connection interrupts too quickly. So I think it just makes sense nowadays to still uh, use a remote controller and I'm not gonna cry a single tear because this feature is missing. I think it's, I think that it's just not worth it if you want to fly a drone then use a remote because otherwise, I don't know, you, it's just that, you know, when the connection breaks after 10, 20, 30 meters, I don't know, that kind of like kills the fun, doesn't it? Being honest, I wouldn't be too scared about that. I actually think that they sit quite tight and uh, I don't think that they're gonna fly away. And just from experience, I know that even if you lose one propeller, it's not like the drone is just gonna, you know, die. It's usually then gonna um, fly less stable. Worst case, it usually then starts to rotate around its own axis like crazy, even though it is not crazy, that is controlled. And then it goes down and lands. Um, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Well, technically I think you for sure can, because why should you not be able to use ND filters? I'm quite sure that some engineers at uh, PGY Tech or Polar Pro or what all these companies are named, that they're already working on some ND filters for this drone. Personally, I'm not sure if I would recommend it because when filming, for example, you should always remember that you cannot manually set up the camera. And I'm afraid of then when adding an ND filter, pushing the ISO up if the ND filter was a tiny bit too strong. Because if then the camera has the feeling that it needs to brighten up the recordings and it pushes up the ISO, uh, that would of course heavily impact the video quality. So I wouldn't want that to happen. And just in general, I think that the camera of the Mavic Mini is just not a professional camera. That's something you gotta keep in mind. So I think the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2, the Phantom 4, the Inspire 1, and of course the Inspire 2. So with all these drones, I recommend using ND filters. With the Mavic Mini, I actually would not recommend using ND filters. I just think that the camera is made to just, you just go out with it, you have fun with it, but it's not the professional tool um, 
that you might be used to from many other DJI drones and products. With the prop guards attached, the drone is definitely gonna weigh more than 249 grams. So the 249 grams really is only the drone with one battery and its propellers installed. As I already said, already the one sticker that you can put on the top of the drone already adds two grams of extra weight to the drone. And of course, um, two of these prop guard cages, uh, they would even add more weight. I didn't now um, put the drone on the scale with those but it doesn't matter because yes, you would definitely extend the 250 grams. So therefore, don't use them when flying outdoors. Anyways, you won't need them when flying outdoors. The drone hovers stable and even indoors, being honest, I don't use those anymore. In the beginning I did because I thought, okay, the drone is lacking some sensors that the other drones have, but it, I don't know, when there's no wind indoors, the drone hovers completely stable. Really, you could, you could raise it up and you could have a cup of coffee um, and leave the room even though you're not supposed to. No, I actually haven't forgotten to mention that it is just that my review was a review, it was not a comparison. If I wanted to point out every single feature that this drone is missing compared to other drones, then I could have made this a very long video because of course, if a drone costs $1,000, $2,000, maybe five or even 10,000, then obviously it has way more features than a drone that costs three, four, five hundred dollars. So um, some things I mentioned, I for example mentioned that within the Mavic Mini, it only, um, it only features a single IMU and a single compass, but the obstacle avoidance, I must admit, I did not expect a functional obstacle avoidance on such a small and um, fairly priced, so to say, drone. The DJI Spark drone, for example, it's another small drone, we already talked about it. It has an infrared sensor in the front. But personally, I don't like infrared sensors. I think that they're quite senseless, useless, because they only work on very short distances. And oftentimes the drone then cannot come to a stop anyways, even if it detects something. So I think that, yeah, the drone has no sensors. You were right, it's important to know that. Um, I maybe should have said it once. Um, the only thing that might be a bit confusing is that the drone, I don't know if you can see it, it has these, uh, these black dots in the front. And usually that is where the other Mavic drones uh, traditionally have their obstacle avoidance cameras. But these dots are just black, I don't know, for design purposes. Uh, there is no cameras hiding here and in general the only obstacle-alike sensors, so to, so to say, that you find on the Mavic Mini's body are here at the bottom. Um, but all they do is they stabilize the drone in flight and they do a really good job, you can really trust them. Um, but yeah, no obstacle avoidance on this drone, now you know it. I still have tons of unanswered questions about the brand new Mavic Mini on my list because I wrote down like 50 or 60 questions. If you want me to answer those as well and maybe even scroll through the comments of this video and look for more interesting questions, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up because if I see that this video has many likes, then I will go ahead and film another second part FAQ and I will then answer even more of your questions. Until then, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out tomstechtime.com. There is tons of cool tools on that website. There's even a tool that helps you determining which drone fits your needs might be helpful. Or of course, uh, the, the cool shirts that you can buy there on tomstechtime.com slash shirts. There's tons of stuff there, check it out. That was it for today. I'm now gonna have, I think, dinner, then I'm gonna go to bed, and then we'll see what life brings tomorrow. Maybe another FAQ, I don't know yet. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up right here and right now. Au revoir, there was a double au revoir, ciao.